In this video, I'll be introducing the basic definitions of manifolds. We start off with the definition of a locally Euclidean space. Okay, what we say is that a d dimensional locally Euclidean space is a topological space x such that um, for any x I choose from x, there exists u a subset of x, an open neighborhood of x, such that there exists u hat, um, an open subset of R d, same d as before, um, open, um, and phi, from u into u hat, a homeomorphism. Seems like a complicated definition. But what it's really saying is that, for example, on a sphere, around any point x, I can find a tiny little open neighborhood u around it. If I make it small enough, and I go ahead and look at it outside, of the sphere, right? It may might look something like that, right? Have that sort of curvature. And then from there, there's just a trivial homeomorphism phi from u down to um u hat a subset of R2. Okay? And same thing with something like the torus, okay? Any point x, open neighborhood u, they look at it separate from the thing, bring it down to R2 via homeomorphism. Okay, so a locally Euclidean space is one that if you zoom in close enough, it will look flat, and this is the, this basically means good for calculus because if I have something like the one dimensional analog like a continuous function around any point x I can just select a tiny little open interval that I could just simply flatten out to an interval on the real line okay and this intuitively just means that from my function, I could just zoom in to a small part of it, and it'll look, okay, flat. Uh, that's the idea behind a locally Euclidean space. And now a manifold, a D, Dimensional manifold is a topological space X such that one X is a D dimensional locally Euclidean space and two X is Hausdorff, which basically means that for any two el elements in X, um, there exists U and V, open subset of X, uh, such that um, U contains X, V contains Y, and they're disjoint. Which basically means that um, any two points can be separated by disjoint open sets. Two, uh, three, is that X has a countable basis. Okay, so these are pretty simple definitions. These two conditions right here basically mean that it is metrizable. Basically meaning it can be generated by a metric. It's just for that extra structure. We'll, we'll go ahead and add some terminology now. Is that, um, if phi 
is the homeomorphism from u to u hat an element of our d, right? From before, the pair u v is called a chart. Okay? So basically, those all those homeomorphisms and those open sets from the definition before are just grouped together and it's called a chart. Phi is called the chart map and u is called the chart domain. Sometimes chart is replaced with coordinate. Okay, and the reason for that is because this gives you a local coordinate system on M. Okay, so uh, on X. So, um, X right here we have is a manifold, is a D dimensional manifold. Okay, and I have X, an element of X, right? Then we say the local coordinate coordinate representation of x okay how do we do this okay so we choose the open u containing x okay from the definition we choose that open u containing x and phi that brings you from u into u hat Okay, then phi of x is going to be a pair of numbers, I'll say, x1 to xn, and that's it. That's how you get the local coordinate representation of a point. And that's why we say it, like, that these are coordinate maps sometimes. And so... With different chart maps, you can get different coordinates. And this is a very important thing because, as an example, we could take polar coordinates, where we take you from R2, removing the positive x-axis and the origin. And what we do is we just identify every point x, y in here with a pair. It's distance from the origin and it's angle from the origin, okay? And this defines a coordinate map phi that brings you into, into the little open section that brings you from zero to two pi in the y coordinates and zero to infinity in the x coordinates or AKA zero to infinity cross zero to two pi. Okay, and this is the coordinate map that where R is going to be the first coordinate because it's boundless, and theta is going to be the second coordinate because it's between 0 and 2 pi. So this is a nice homeomorphism that gives you a brand new coordinate system on this subset of R2 at least. And that's a very specific example and a very important example, and I will actually use it quite often. And that's it.